What's up everybody? Welcome back to Techno Geek. I got a lot of positive feedback on my last video about how to give viruses the ban hammer. So what are we going to do this week? We're going to go even more in depth. So now you got some really bad viruses, some sticky viruses, or maybe you forgot to turn off your internet connection like I told you to last time. And so now you got viruses all over your computer. You got to do something to get rid of them. This is the tutorial for you. We're going to turn around here and go to OBS. Buckle up guys because it's going to be a long video. Okay, so viruses sometimes are going to know that you're trying to edit the registry, that you're trying to get in there and get rid of them, and sometimes they'll prevent you from using the registry in a way that it'll make like Windows or your operating system is not letting you um, go in and edit these things. Um, of course, if you're messing with the registry, you're definitely using Windows, so I don't know what I was just thinking. But anyway, what you're going to need to do is uh, open up your... Um, your start menu or your start screen if you're using Windows 8.1 and type in um, msconfig and that'll bring up system configuration and you're gonna come over here to the boot tab and then you're gonna come down here and you're just gonna check safe boot and that way we can um, boot into safe mode and just use minimal um, you don't wanna go into these other ones and, unless it's really bad or network maybe if you know you're a system administrator but if you are you know way more about this stuff than I do so with that being said you'll just hit apply and hit OK and then it's gonna ask you to restart so then you'll just click restart and after you restart it's going to boot up into safe mode so I'm gonna go ahead and click that and we'll watch it happen again you're gonna um, be a little underexposed here while this goes I can <sighs> Windows 10 always updating Okay, so for whatever reason, uh, you can't use OBS in safe mode, or at least it won't use any of my um, it won't use any of my desktop audio. So I'm going to do my best to record all of this in on my DSLR. So please, please, please forgive me if this is incredibly shaky and you kind of get motion sick. But anyway, if you look into the bottom corners here, you can see, hopefully, yes, you can see there, I am running in safe mode now and you can see it's gonna automatically disable a lot of things because that's just the way that safe mode works so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna edit our registry now the reason we had to come into safe mode in the first place is because sometimes a virus that takes control of your PC like this is going to uh, it's gonna not allow you to start editing the registry because it knows that you're one of those smart people that can fix things. So here we go. I'm going to type in R E G. Well, that's not working. There's a fail for you. Windows 10 at its best. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so if you're having troubles like me, uh, it could just be safe mode, it could be Windows 10, but anyway, you're going to want to come to your uh, inner, your uh, Microsoft Explorer, you're going to type in R-E-G-E-D-I-T into your search box, and then you'll come to this Reg Edit EXE under C Windows right here. You don't want to go to the WoW 64 because that's going to be using 64-bit architecture, 
and in safe mode you cannot use 64-bit architecture. So when you double click this uh, in safe mode you're already an administrator so it'll just pop it open. Most of the time when you have a virus it's going to want to run at startup. So we're going to check a few of the registry folders. So you're going to want to come and bear with me because I do have to refer to my notes because we're heading into a realm that I am very confused on. But you're going to want to head into registry edit and you're going to want to go to h key underscore local machine local underscore machine. So we'll start here and then we're going to go to software and then from software we're going to find Microsoft and then you're going to want to scroll down but don't scroll too far because you don't want to go into the next cascade of folders but you're going to want to find Windows which isn't too hard to find Windows there we go so you're going to open Windows and then you're going to go to current version and then you're going to find these different folders and underneath here you're going to find run run and run once these are the two folders that you're going to need for this step so what you're going to want to do is click into here and you're going to want to check out and see if you see anything that looks suspicious or maybe doesn't doesn't have a name that you recognize as something being that you installed. So also what you want to do is when you're looking at these names, if you don't recognize something like this is just some random letters and numbers, right? So we'll highlight that. And what you're going to want to do is follow it over here to the path so you can figure out what that really is. And you can see here, this is my audio driver. So we definitely don't want to get rid of that because it is very important to, you know, having audio on your system. So for me, this one looks pretty good. As you can see, most of this stuff that's starting on uh, startup is mostly stuff that I will be using on a day-to-day -day basis. So then we'll come to run once. That's your next folder that you're going to check out. And this one just has default nothing. So that's good. So you know that there's nothing there. So there are some other places we want to check out. We're going to we're going to get out of this cascade of folders here. Okay, so under this cascade current version, we're going to find policies. And in policies, we're going to find explorer. And here you want to do the exact same thing. Make sure that there's nothing crazy here. Now, most of this may look a little scary to you, but don't worry. This is just, this is all normal. So if you, if yours looks exactly like mine, you're completely fine. If you have anything with a bunch of random letters and characters, or if you have something that might say Windows Update, um, keep in mind, Windows Update will start when it needs to. It will not start on startup. So if you have anything in your startup folders that we're going through here in your registry that says uh, Windows Update or Windows something, it's probably not Windows. But this looks good, so we're going to come and navigate to the next part, which is basically all of the exact same stuff. We're going to come and get completely out of the H key local machine, and we're going to come to H key current user. Okay, and we're going to go to the exact same place we went before. We're going to go software. We're going to go scroll down to, oop, I think I passed it. Microsoft. And then we're going to scroll down until we find Windows again. All right, and then in Windows, we're going to go to current version once more. And then we're going to look at the same things we just looked at. We're going to go to the folder that says run and run once. So here, pretty much the same thing. Now I have my com games. Now this one, I don't use that often, so I think I'm going to use this as an example. 
But this is, uh, this is just for a game that I have. Uh, I can't remember the name of the game right now because I don't play it that often. It's a, it, it's, it's a MMORPG. It's kind of fun. I watch some other guys play. I like to drop in with them every now and again. But anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to come here to modify. And then you see here where it has this. See if I can get a good zoom for you. Where it has this path here. If you are afraid of what this is, and you're not sure if it's, you're not sure if it's really due to, uh, if you're not sure if it's really something that you want to be running, or if you're not sure if it's a virus, or you're not sure if it's something that Windows has, you're just going to put a colon. Oh, you're going to put a colon in front of it and hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it impossible for Windows to load this file because it's not going to know with that colon there, it's not going to know the path. So what that's going to do is stop it from loading, and if this is a virus, then you'll notice there will be nothing wrong with your computer, and this virus won't load, and you'll be able to delete it later. So come over to Run Once, and then we have a few things here. I'm going to make sure I can read this name. It is a bit hard when, uh... Okay, so this is OneDrive, which I really, really hate. But, whatever. It has to be there for Windows 10, so it's there. So those are no big deal. We're gonna go ahead and come out of there, and we're going to go back again... ...to Policies. Under Windows. And here you're just going to look for anything, and again, there's nothing there. This is basically means nothing. So, my registry looks all good. Hopefully yours did too. We're going to cut out of here because I don't have much recording time left. And I will switch back over to OBS on a regular boot. Okay, sorry there, I forgot something. Um, in order to get back to a regular boot, you're going to need to come into um, MS Config again. And again, you're going to want to make sure you're running under System32 and not this AMD 64 because that is a 64-bit and we're limited to 32-bit. So you're going to come over here, you're going to go back and do all the same things we did before except you're going to go to boot and you're going to untick safe boot. You're going to hit apply first, hit OK, and now you're going to need to do a restart. So I will be back when this is restarted in a normal boot. Okay, so we're back into a normal boot now, and what we're going to want to do, well, what I want to show you is that all of the things that are loaded here, it is not including the my.com, which I disabled. So if you wanted to, I'm not going to do it, but here we can just type in reg edit, thank goodness. It's going to ask you to run as administrator, hit yes. Okay. So I'm going to come out of current user because I believe that's where we left off, and it was. I'm going to go to local machine, software. Basically, you're going to navigate back to where you just were, where you found uh, the virus in the first place. Sorry, it's hard. It's hard to think in here. Okay, so here it was. You see, when we added the colon, it did not allow it to start up. There's usually a little icon here that says, uh, my... And then if you hover over it, it'll say my.com. Anyway, what you can do is you can come in here and you can right click and then delete, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back, modify, and I am going to get rid of that colon because sometimes I do want to play that game. And I just can't believe I can't remember the name of the game right now. And Kremcheck is going to hate me for this one. Really sorry, Krem. But anyway, there's that part. That's all done with. So once you have gone through your registry and you've removed the things that you thought were viruses or you are noticing that you got no problems running your system, then you're going to want to go back to part one where I explained to you um, exactly what to do to make sure there's still no viruses on your computer and then you're going to find out you're going to find out what to do to make sure all the viruses won't come back. All the viruses on the internet won't come to haunt you while you're 
on the CD parts of the internet. That's all in part one, so go check that out. So let's say you've done all of this, you've edited your registry, or maybe you're scared to edit your registry, which is fine, that's understandable. What you're going to want to do is something like I did here. You're going to want to back up, you're going to want to create a backup of your current stuff in my backups HDD. So this is a separate hard drive that I have. If you don't have a separate hard drive, you can get one or you can create a system image on your own hard drive and you're going to want to reformat. Uh, that's the quickest and easiest way to get back to basics. You're going to start all over with a brand new operating system. It's going to be like there was nothing ever wrong with your PC. It's going to be like you have a brand new computer. So if you don't want to do any of that, what I would recommend is to um, do a quick backup if you can. This, What I would recommend is to come over to recovery. And what you can do is uh, restart into advanced startup and you can try to do a system restore which is where I would start because a system restore will take you back to the last version of a properly running stable system so I'll show you how to set up a system restore in just a moment but if you're really positive that there's something wrong the way to reformat your PC the easiest if you're running Windows 8.1 or greater is to come to, uh, excuse me, I should have, uh, let me get out of here and I'll show you how to get there. So you're going to come in and just, you know, settings. If you're on Windows 8 or 10, you can just click settings. For Windows 10, you're going to come to update and security. You're going to come to recovery. Reset this PC. This is going to start you all the way back from the very beginning. Click get started and it will start to reformat the PC for you. Now, if that's not working, what you're going to want to do is find somebody who has a copy, put it on a pen drive. If you don't have a pen drive, put it on a DVD, whatever. Find a way to get a copy of the operating system like I have here and reformat that way. Um, I can do another video on that, so leave a comment down below if that's what you want. Um, I just feel like most people that are watching right now probably have a good understanding of how to reformat their PC. Okay, sorry about that. I had to cut off there because it was getting way too hot with all these lights in here. So I apologize once again. But anyway, so now you've gone through, you've cleaned out your registry, you've gone back to part one and you've made sure that there's no viruses on your computer. Now is a good time to set up um, System Restore. So I first let me tell you what System Restore is. It uh, regularly tracks changes to your system files and creates restore points for you to fall back to in case your PC is compromised with viruses. Now in order to take advantage of System Restore you're going to need to enable system protection. So in order to do this you need to open File Explorer which look at that. Yeah you guys have an idea of how I name my stuff now. You're going to open File Explorer, okay? Then you're going to find Computer or this PC, depending on the version of Windows that you're running. You're going to right click and you're going to come down here to Properties. Alternatively, just a quick little pro tip for you guys, you can hit Windows key plus pause break and um, that will pull up the same little thing here. So that's just a, a quick pro tip for you. So anyway, you're going to want to come over to the left pane and uh, click System Protection. And then right here, here you are with this System Protection. I'm going to exit this so we can just focus on this right here. So you're going to want to find which one of these drives has your operating system on it. Windows makes it easy because the one that has the operating system, if it's not named C, which by default it is, it will have the Windows icon right here to let you know that this is the one that has your operating system. So what you're going to do from there is you're going to hit configure. You're going to check this radio button right here that says turn on system protection. Um, allocate how much uh, you want to use or you can just use the default amount and hit OK. And then you're going to want to, uh, if, it, if apply is highlighted here, you want to hit apply and OK again. All right. Now, in order to perform a system restore, you're first going to have to create a restore point. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. 
we're going to open system protection and again we're going to excuse me we're going to hit create and right here you're just going to want to name it something so since we just uh, made sure our registry was clean we're going to call this clean registry you want to name it something that will be easy for you to remember how your system was or the state of your system when you created the restore point so that way you're not wondering oh god what programs did I have installed did I have the virus this day or not you're gonna know right here we just cleaned our registry we just made sure we're clean we already did our viruses scan so we're all good so we'll hit create and just like that it's gonna create a restore point so let's wait for that for a minute shouldn't take too long and the restore point was created successfully so now we're gonna hit close and now anytime you think you might have a virus or something like that you can always just fall back to that to that system restore point so the way to do that is in this same pan right, panel right here you're gonna click system restore and it's gonna bring up this wizard you're gonna click next you're gonna find the one we just created right here clean registry and you're gonna click next and then it's gonna give you some information about what's gonna happen and then you're gonna click finish but I'm not gonna do that because I know my system is clean and also it will interrupt this recording. So if all goes well, after your system restore, you should have a clean PC. You should be back to a state that your PC was when it had no viruses, when everything was working normally. If that's not the case, then you might need to go more in depth and you might need to do an advanced startup uh, and do a, a either a system refresh or a complete operating system uh, reinstall. So those are a little more in depth. Well, I, I take that back. They're not, they're not so much in depth, but those require a separate video. So if you want me to make a video, um, leave me a comment down below and I will definitely think about doing that. But there are plenty of uh, well-informed people on YouTube right now that have plenty of great videos, so I encourage you to go check them out. And if I find a really good one, I will link it down in the description. Well, I hope I was able to help everybody with this information that I shared with you today. And hopefully you'll be able to keep viruses away if you go back and watch my part one video, or if you already have, you can just follow those steps. And hopefully that should keep the viruses away. But now you know what to do and you have the tools to get rid of viruses in the future because it can get pretty pricey to pay other people and there's no reason you should have to because you can do it all by yourself. So I just, again, I just hope I was able to help everybody today and I really appreciate everybody for stopping by and if you made it this far, I really, really appreciate that because I know this is a long video. So I hope I see everybody in the next one and have a good one.